Hey guys, this is Leah with Scott Leroy Marketing, and in today's tip video, I'm going to show you how you can send a DocuSign interactive form as well as a PDF to your clients to be electronically signed um, and the steps it would take to go through preparing that and uh, sending that off. Now, the main difference between a DocuSign interactive form, okay, so you'll see this blue icon right here that says form. And then you'll see this orange icon right here, red rather, that says PDF. Okay, the main difference between the two, if you open the interactive form, which I will in a minute, the, with the blue icon, that will be automatically fillable. Okay, so when I say interactive, I mean that the text boxes are already there and you can just go ahead and click and start typing. Versus a PDF, it doesn't have any fields on it. Okay, um, so you would have to add those fields first. So you'd have to add signature fields for your clients to be able to sign versus a interactive form, those signature fields are added automatically by the system. And I'll, I'll show you this firsthand so this makes a little more sense. But first step in this is you would open the form in order to start editing it, and specifically the interactive form. So in order to edit interactive forms, and again those are ones that are already fillable, you would go to the document section of your DocuSign room, because you can add any forms by clicking on add on the top right. Okay, to add the DocuSign forms, you'll see that same little blue logo there. So you can add DocuSign forms right from there. Okay, PDFs are added from your computer. One of the other ways here. But once I have the DocuSign form in here, again, look for the one with the blue icon. I can go ahead and click on that to open it to start editing it. Okay, so once that opens up for you, you might see some information that's auto-filling onto the form. Right? That pulls from the details section of your DocuSign room. But you'll notice that you can simply scroll down to start typing. Right? So you can click on any section on any field to go ahead and start typing. Click on any check boxes or these dots, the radio dots to move that around. Okay, so this is the nature of an interactive form. You can click to Go ahead and edit that. Now once you're do done doing that, and you know, of course you wouldn't do it this quickly, so feel free to pause the video so you can finish that up. All right, but once you're done, you would go ahead and click save and close on the very top right. So always click save and close whenever you edit an interactive form first before taking it into get DocuSign. All right. So this is the form that I just edited. Again, it has that blue icon indicating it was a fillable one. I notice if I open this form up, it is not interactive. So it's the nature of a PDF, just so you can see the difference. You'll see it doesn't have any uh, text fields to go ahead and click on. All right, so in order to edit a PDF in DocuSign, you have to pull it into an envelope. You have to click on the DocuSign option to pull it into an envelope first in order to edit a PDF. All right, so let me show you what that would look like. Just a heads up in case you're wondering, if you look at the, the interactive form, well, I didn't mean to click on it, but since I did already, you'll notice on the bottom it doesn't already have the initial for, uh, fields. I just don't want that to throw you off. So if you scroll to the bottom of uh, the interactive forms, excuse me, you won't see the initial boxes display until you pull that into an envelope. So this is different than dot loop, so I just want to point that out to you so that you're not confused. So that's correct. And again, if you change anything, make sure you click Save and Close. In this case, I'll go ahead and next out. I didn't change anything anyway. All right, so this is how you go up about pulling it into the envelope to edit it further, okay, especially the PDF. And you have to do these steps in order to edit the PDF, and this will allow you to send both the DocuSign interactive form and the PDF all in one envelope to your client, which equates to all in one email to your client. So what I would recommend is hover your mouse over um, the form that you want to go ahead and send. When you do that, you'll see a little checkbox or a little dot display on the top left of the form, and you can click on that to check it. And then we can do the same thing for the PDF, right? The PDF that we want to send, hover your mouse, click on the check dot, 
on the top left. Okay, that dot does not appear until you hover your mouse over the form. Now, once you've checked the forms that you want to go ahead and send, you will see this men menu appear on the top center of your screen, top center of your room. If you are not seeing this menu, it's because you did not check the forms. So uh, once you check those, the bulk action menu will appear, and we want to select the DocuSign option. It's the icon in the middle that looks like a pen. All right, so now we're telling the system we're ready to get these forms DocuSigned. So remember, at this point, in the next couple steps here, we'll be able to edit that PDF as well. So hang tight on that. So once I click on that DocuSign icon, it pulls me into the envelope. Okay, if you're wondering what an envelope is, just really try to channel snail mail here, right? Like you have this envelope in your hand. You have put the two forms that you want in it. Okay, I see that blue icon again, indicating this is the interactive form, and then there's that PDF icon. So I see those two forms. And then under add recipients to the envelope, right, this is what we would need to do in snail mail. We go ahead and add the recipients to the envelope. So add recipient. And we want to go ahead and select the pre-tagged roles option, especially if there is an interactive form, okay? because that's how the system would automatically know where, where they would sign. So add recipient, pre-tagged roles. So from here, I want to go ahead and select my client from the dropdown. And the reason I have my clients added in here is I added my clients to the details section of my DocuSign room. So that's always where you want to add your clients to the details section of your room. So then I can go ahead and select my seller one and seller two from the drop downs and click add selected. Again, this is a necessary step for DocuSign to know where the client needs to sign. You can add a message if you would like, not required. And then let's scroll to the top right and click next. And guys, if, if, there's, if you're still working on adding your recipients, feel free to pause the video so you can go ahead and catch up. And then you can always play it again to get to this next step. All right, so again, make sure you added your recipients and then click next on the top right. All right, so at this point, this is where I'm able to make further edits and lay further fields on the left-hand side, especially to that PDF, right? Because the interactive form I was already able to type in. It made my life easy. And for the interactive form, right? This was the interactive form that I was already able to edit. I can see that because I can see my client's information is already added here, right? This is all that information I had. And on the interactive form specifically, right, we had two forms. One was interactive, it was fillable, and the second one was a PDF that we couldn't fill in. On the interactive form specifically, it automatically lays the initial and signature uh, boxes for your clients. I know this is for my clients respectively because I can see on the top left, each client will have a different color assigned to them. So I can see both clients here. And the initial boxes are their corresponding colors. So, of course, I always like to just double check this is on the bottom of each one of my uh, forms before I send this. So I'm, I'm scrolling through the interactive form, checking over that. Here's the signature boxes. But where the real excitement begins is if we scroll down to the PDF version, right? By nature, right, this PDF, when I pulled it up in my DocuSign room, I was not able to just start typing in it. Right, so if I need to make any changes to this form, or if I need to add initial or signature boxes, right, the initial boxes are not added automatically to PDFs, so that would always have to be added. So how you would go about doing that is on the left-hand side, you'll see the options for initials. So you can go ahead and click on that, and remember the color of your contact, that matters. So this is for my um, seller one, Michael Scott. So I'll go ahead and lay that first box. Now I want to add my second client's initial box. So I first change the client from the drop down on the top left. And you'll notice all these fields turn that blue color, whatever the color of that contact is. Click on the initial option, follows my mouse. I can line that up. 
and click to drop it. All right, and you would have to do that on the very bottom of each and every page, you know, on the actual PDF, right? And same with the signature box. It's the same exact concept, but just make sure um, when you're adding a signature box. I have been uh, told by agents that uh, it does not date the signature as well. So your, your broker in charge most likely would like the date on that signature. Uh, so make sure when you're adding signatures specifically to the form. Sorry, wrong page. Um, when you add the signature specifically to also add the date signed field here. And as long as it's blue, it will force the client to change that field to add the date. So now I need to do that for my second client. So I'm changing the color on the top left, adding any signature and the date field. All right, so adding any fields is super easy. There's also text fields on the left-hand side, so you can go through and add any other information to the pages if you need to. Um, so if you need to add any text fields, I just wanna point out two quick tips if you are adding text fields to your PDF. Um, so first of all, you'd click the text option on the left-hand side and drop that just as needed or as normal, like the initial boxes. Then you can always expand it by hovering your mouse over any of these corner dots. But now what you guys really need to know if you lay any text boxes, remember, as I mentioned before, if the uh, field is the contacts color, right, like this yellow belongs to seller one, it will force the client to fill that out when your client goes to sign it. So that's not maybe necessarily what I want from this field specifically. Let's say it's a field I want to fill out as the agent. If that's the case, you just need to uncheck. So as long as the text field is selected, you'll see an editing panel pull out on the right hand side. So it only displays when the field is selected. If you uncheck that as a required field, you'll see it turns it white right? or see through indicating that it will not force the client to fill that out. Now, if you wanna take that a step further and you wanna make sure the client cannot change the field or fill that in, you can click on the read only option and then only you are able to fill it in. So that, just to let you know, if that is a field that you need to fill in and you do not want your client to fill in, make sure that is clear. All right, and these are the uh, field, or the check boxes, the settings I would suggest. All right, and if you need to have any text boxes that you need your clients to collaborate on, right? Because again, it will only force the client to uh, sign or fill out fields that are their color. But if you want to allow your clients to collaborate, you can lay text fields, and then on the right hand side, select collaboration and allow your recipients to collaborate. So that might come in handy if you're sending like a seller's disclosure or something of the sort to allow them to both respond to those answers or questions. All right guys, so that's how you can go about um, editing a PDF as well as sending that with an interactive form. Just keep in mind the interactive form will automatically have these initial boxes and signature fields, whereas the PDF, those would need to be laid manually. And then once you do that, of course, you can click the recipient preview, which I always recommend on the top right, in order to um, make sure that you set that up correctly. You'll be able to see it based on whichever one of your contacts you would like to make sure that they can sign all the fields. So once you select that, you can click start, and it's literally their view. I love that. I do it every time before sending. A little fast. Once you're done, you can X out of that on the top right and click send. All right, guys, if you have any questions um, on how to do this, feel free to email us, support at scottlavorymarketing.com, and I would be more than happy to walk you through that. All right, guys, let me know. Have a great day.